We are still following the breaking news on Capitol Hill tonight. The White House is watching as the House Republicans formalize their impeachment inquiry into President Biden. Joel Payne and Maura Gillespie are back with us here at the America Decides table. Joel is a CBS News political contributor, Democratic strategist, and chief communications officer for Move On. Maura previously served as an advisor to Speaker John Boehner and Congressman Adam Kinzinger. She is now the founder of Bluestack Strategies, two top strategists here at the table. So we just got in a statement from the White House. President Biden said that this move by House Republicans, a baseless stunt. Joel, as the Democrat here at the table, the president's clearly pushing back, but he's not getting in front of a camera. He's issuing a statement. Yeah. And the framing, I think, of the president's statement is something that jumped out to me. Um, talked about all the things that are on the agenda, the national um, agenda, whether it's Ukraine, Israel, talked about wanting to secure the border and frame that up against Republicans focusing on what he calls a baseless impeachment ploy. Um, and I think you're going to hear that a lot from Democrats. I was actually talking to someone uh, close to the White House related to the president's statement, and they also pointed out to me they really see this as an extension of Republicans doing Trump's bidding. You know, almost them acting as a surrogate for the Trump campaign. You could see Mike Johnson, folks like Troy Neals, who admitted earlier today that this is about Trump 2024. That's very much on the mind of the folks at the White House right now. Maura, you've been an eyewitness to history. You've had an up-close, really upfront, first-row view of the Republican Party's evolution over the last decade. When you think about what you've seen, where does this fit into the larger Republican story we've all been following, whether it's inside or outside uh, the GOP? You know, we thought we had it bad, you know, 2013, 2014. With the government uh, shut down. And right. And what we saw as the rabble rousers and those who were trying to be obstructionist and move the goalpost on John Boehner and leadership then. Uh, but that was nothing compared to what, you know, the, co the conference has become, unfortunately. And again, you know, I think with messaging, especially on this topic, you're going to have so many issues with people like Neil saying those things and putting that out there as it is a 2024 uh, for Trump and that they're doing Trump's bidding. And the Republicans who voted, again, all of them voted for it. And so some of these members who did it for the reasons that I, I think a majority of them did it was because they felt like it was important to get the information that, come from, that comes from an impeachment inquiry. They're going to really have to message that against members of their own caucus who are saying Trump trying to before. Like, that's not helpful to them. It's not a helpful message. What we're not seeing tonight, at least for now, is Speaker Mike Johnson. I mean, he's not... Newt, he's not even really Speaker John Boehner in the sense of a public presence who's saying, I'm the standard bearer for this impeachment inquiry. This seems to be much more of a bottom-up effort from rank-and-file members rather than a top-down uh, effort by the Speaker as he battles the president. Well, look, I think that's probably a tactic. As a strategy, I think he wants to demonstrate this is not leadership enforcing a vote upon their members. I think he wants to demonstrate, hey, we were compelled to do this because of all the questions about Joe Biden. So I think probably what you're seeing is a little bit of a strategy um, from Mike Johnson. And look, this will win him points. This will raise money. This will certainly spike energy within the Republican caucus in the House, but also with Republicans around the country who are looking for something to rally behind. I just don't think it's the type of strategy that's additive. It's not an addition strategy. It's not a strategy that's going to you know, grow the coalition of Republicans. It's not going to make it easier for Republicans to hold the House in 2024. But what about the White House? When you look at the presidential race, the, the big news this week, New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu threw his support behind former Ambassador Nikki Haley. You have a presidential race that's playing out at the same time this is playing out on Capitol Hill. But you don't hear Ambassador Haley or former Governor Christie or Governor DeSantis talking about this issue with the same kind of visceral energy that you hear at least from House Republicans today. Do you see a disconnect between the reality politically of the presidential race and the primary and what's going on in Congress or not? It's not helpful to those candidates to be talking about what the, what's happening on the Hill because House Republicans have created a, a terrible narrative for themselves by having the speaker fight last as long as it did. And they're trying to crawl back from being the chaos caucus of, of what's happened. And to Joel, Joel's point earlier, not getting enough things done this cycle, this Congress, a session. So I wouldn't, if I were a candidate or if I were advising a candidate, I would not want to touch the House Republican or even just Congress in general with a 10-foot poll. I wouldn't even want to talk about this topic because it's not helpful to them or their campaigns. Uh, but they can be talking about what Joe Biden has or hasn't done. They can be talking about where he has failed to, to get things across the finish line for the American people.
that's fine, but they shouldn't really be touching on group, Congress. Group of folks who I'll be very curious to hear from, Senate Republicans. Now, mm -hmm. Senate Republicans have taken a little bit of a harder line on the you know, Ukraine issue related to the border spending, but are you going to hear from, let's say, a Josh Hawley, who's up for re-election in 2024? He are you just endorsed from, Trump. A, he, who just endorsed Trump. Are you going to hear from a Ted Cruz? Are you going to hear from a Rick Scott? Folk, the Republicans who you would think of um, who would naturally be aligned with uh, Donald Trump, but who maybe it doesn't help them politically to be seen as kind of a part of this larger effort to impeach Joe Biden. Are, are they going to be outspoken? And is the broader Senate Republican caucus, uh, is Mitch McConnell and, and, and those folks, the John Thunes of the world, are they going to be outspoken as well? Earlier in the broadcast, Scott McFarlane, our correspondent on Capitol Hill, said he was speaking to Congressman Burchett, a Republican who doesn't believe that the Senate Republicans would do anything to impeach uh, President Biden down the line. But it's a tricky thing to predict because mm -hmm. you don't know how exactly it's going to unfold. Not to ask you to make a prediction, <laughs> but how do you see the dynamics at least more in terms of if this actually gets out of the House, impeachment articles are passed by House Republicans by a narrow margin in the House. What happens in the Senate? What are the dynamics there? Again, there's a lot that needs to be uncovered. Uh, but I will say that the struggle to impeach even President Donald Trump uh, should show us that this is a very serious step to be taking, and it shouldn't be taken lightly. And I think that all of those members need to think about where they are in their re-election cycle, especially for the Senate, because that, that's going to be a factor. Um, but also how they want history to remember them. Do they have enough information to go ahead and make this vote? It's historic. It's hugely important. So they shouldn't be taking it lightly. And uh, again, not only just for their constituents and for who they represent, but for themselves and what the legacy they want to leave behind. Is this the right vote? really needs to be a conscious and thought, thought out and thoughtful, you know, vote. We're going to have to leave it there. Joel Payne, Maura Gillespie, thanks so much for staying around all night. I, I <laughs> promise we're going to let you go home. You're not going to have to sleep here overnight at America Decides, but come Thank back you. soon. We appreciate it. <laughs>